This is Rick Wiles. He has a TV show on Dish Network, DirecTV, and others. He's a massive conspiracy theorist who believes the cabal is trying to inject eggs of synthetic parasites into people's bloodstreams to control them. Seriously. This is part three. If you haven't seen the other parts, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. If there's missing context, I'll provide it. In the last episode, he talked about the FBI searching Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago mansion for classified documents. And get this. His defense of Trump is that he thinks he took classified documents that exonerate Donald Trump and implicate the FBI in Russian collusion. This is absolutely bizarre. He's about to give us more reasons why he thinks that. Let's watch. You afraid you may go to prison? You corrupt FBI officials, Department of Justice officials, yeah. You know, the, the FBI director who signed the search warrant was appointed by Donald Trump. So you can only take this so far. Trump specifically put the guy in. You're going to go to prison because the American people are going to rise up and clean house. That's what's going to happen. And Donald Trump has the evidence. And he didn't, he didn't store it in his bedroom. He didn't have it under his bed. He's a lot smarter. You couldn't find the binder. I don't know what brought him to that conclusion. They found the classified documents they were looking for. Had nothing to do with this binder that he's talking about. Uh, knowing Trump, he had a fake binder. <laughs> I would believe that. They do. They really do believe this guy to be like the most intelligent genius alive, don't they? He's always 10 steps ahead of everybody. They are absolutely unhinged from reality. And he wrote on it classified. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. the agents went so far as even to uh, go through Melania Trump's closet. Uh, they were searching. Maybe they were trying on dresses. They yeah, do a lot of, of that. A oh, bunch of perverts and, now. Uh, maybe they were doing that. They're, just, so. they're going through her underwear and her bras. Let's get real. What Dude, are you kidding me? What is wrong with these people? Oh, my God. They build these bizarre fantasies in their head. What are the FBI agents doing? They're... Come on. They were looking at her panties. <laughs> what, what do you... I don't know. Huh? That's crazy, Rick. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. They were looking at her panties. That's what the FBI agents were doing in the bedroom. Get real. These people are corrupt. <laughs> They're perverts. Okay? I don't know if I can say that on the Word Network. I'll try <laughs> no. it tomorrow, okay? <laughs> I'll try it tomorrow and see if they let me do it. All right. Now, we kind of mentioned this in the Daily Mail article, but uh, News Australia uh, went a little bit further with this. Uh, Donald Trump's legal team floats a dark theory. That, that, that's what they call it, dark theory after FBI raids. It's not such a dark theory when you consider the FBI. Donald Trump's legal team has floated an explosive theory, sensationally claiming the FBI may have planted incriminating evidence at the former president's residence. Quote, nothing like this has ever happened to a president of the United States before, Mr. Trump himself said of the search, denouncing. You know what else hasn't happened with a former president? A former president's never taken nuclear documents to his house with him and refused against the law and refused to give them back when asked. What he called a weaponization of the justice system by radical left by radical left Democrats who desperately don't want me to run for president. It, would it shock you that the FBI would plan evidence no, there? No. Not, not in this day and age. And he's also very smart. No, okay. I guess it wouldn't shock me that law enforcement planted evidence. That happens from time to time. But I need evidence of it. I need evidence that there was some kind of malfeasance or questionable activity or whatever else. You can't just claim it and assume it's true like Rick Wiles is doing here. And what he's doing, because he's, he's, he's planting the idea. Right. All right. He's, he's, he's one jump ahead of the FBI. Uh, he's, he's got the idea out there now. There are tens of millions of people who now think they may have planted evidence in his house. So the FBI now is, uh, they're, they're going to be uh, much more cautious in what they do, Doc, because... Right. They've already been pretty cautious. I mean, everything that they've done so far has been completely above board. Uh, this isn't going to be an O.J. Simpson trial. They're going to have to be very careful. 
how they convict him. And I don't think it went right. I don't think they found the binder. Do you notice all the use of the word think constantly? I think, I believe. It's constant with this dude. This guy is obsessed with his own conspiracy theories. I'm really thinking your way now on this. So, Because if they had, they would have been hauling out everything. We need to ask the Biden White House, did... They can't haul out everything. You know why? Because it's top secret, secret compartmented information. They can't haul out everything. Can't haul out anything, pretty much. If the public knew what Trump had, it would put national security at risk. That's why he was being investigated under the Espionage Act in the first place. These people come up with some bizarre, piss-poor excuse every single time, don't they? We need to ask the Biden White House, did you reclassify the binder? And you know it was reclassified. There's nothing publicly stated, but it was never published. Right. So I'm assuming it has been reclassified. Uh, the next one. Assuming, I think, I believe, it's constant with this guy. Has no reason to believe any of this stuff, but he espouses it anyways. He espouses it as a fact and then makes fun of people who don't believe it like he does. And, uh, let's see, uh, uh, so what, number 33? Number 30. 30? Yes. Where am I? Yes. Okay. Well, this oh, is yes, yes, okay. So uh, NBC affiliate in New York, uh, WNBC, Trump says he refused to answer New York uh, Attorney General's questions about uh, the pro in the probe in, of his business. Again, this was the ploy to get him to New York to allow the FBI to raid his house. As if the FBI... Okay, first of all, the FBI didn't get the search warrant until three days before they went in. So it's not like they're just sitting on this search warrant waiting. It, just any moment now, you know, it's going to be the perfect time to go in. We've had the search warrant for months. No, it wasn't like that. They had it for three days, and then they went in, first of all. Second, Trump leaves his house all the time. They didn't have to lure him out to get in there. And on top of that, they could have just gone there when he was there. It's a legal search warrant. The police would have restrained Donald Trump if that's what it took. I get why the FBI would have wanted to do it when Trump wasn't there because they didn't want to cause a scene and have the imagery of them like restraining the previous president or whatever but uh it didn't have to go down the way that Rick Wiles is describing anyway it's just complete nonsense Letitia James is just as corrupt Yes, in on all of this. And so former President Donald Trump said he refused to answer questions Wednesday at a deposition by investigators for New York Attorney General Letitia James as part of her civil probe into his business. Uh, Mr. Trump announced he had invoked his Fifth Amendment right against making self-incriminating statements shortly after arriving for his scheduled court-ordered interview under oath at James's offices in New York City. Mr. Trump said this, I was once asked, if you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? Now, I know the answer to that question, and Trump, uh, Mr. Trump said in a furious statement that railed against James as a renegade prosecutor with a vendetta against him. Quote, when your family, your company, and all the people in your orbit have become the targets of an unfounded, politically motivated witch hunt supported by lawyers, prosecutors, and the fake news media, you have no choice, Trump said. Just piss poor defense for being a complete scumbag. Accordingly, under the advice of my counsel and for all the above reasons, I declined to answer the questions under the rights and privileges afforded to every citizen under the United States Constitution, he said. Fair enough. You know, you, you can feel free to use the Fifth Amendment if you want. I plead the Fifth uh, right to avoid self-incrimination or whatever. I don't remember the exact language. That's okay with me. But, you know, the jury and everybody else around is going to view you as guilty of everything. You know, that's exactly what Trump pointed out when other people are using the Fifth Amendment. It's just pure hypocrisy now. He, he, he made the right decision because she, she was, it, it, it was going to be got, gotcha questions. Right. Okay? She was just looking for anything she could use to get an indictment against him in the state of New York. But the main thing we, we want everyone to see is 
Letitia James was part of this operation to raid Mar-a-Lago. That's complete nonsense, but okay. She enticed him, not enticed him, she ordered him to come to New York. They set him up. He had to go to New York to answer the subpoena that she served on him to be, to be deposed. And so she was working with the corrupt FBI and Justice Department, letting them know, I've got him. He's coming up on this date. He won't be in Mar-a-Lago. Right. That's when they scheduled the raid. He could have been at Mar-a-Lago for the search. That would have been perfectly fine. You know, he would have been restrained, and that would have looked really bad, but they totally could have restrained him, and it would have been okay. And they purposely scheduled the raid for yes, them. They knew right. he will not, would not be there. Okay, so uh, the next one I want to go to, this is uh, number 33. Um, this is from September uh, 2016. ABC News, September 2016. Why Hillary Clinton deleted 33,000 emails on her private email server. ABC News, in their great wisdom, Doc, they knew that there were millions of Americans who were suspicious about Hillary Clinton, thinking, well, somebody who deleted 33,000 emails must be up to something. Right. Do I delete emails all the time. Do, do you not delete emails? You know how long it takes to delete 33,000 emails? Not that long. You just select all and then hit the delete button. Uh, it would take quite a bit of time. And so... A Have these people ever used an email, like, server or whatever in their lives? ABC News. In an act... Yeah, more buttery mails over here. Got them, got them talking about buttery mails. The public service... Explain to the American people in 2016 during the campaign why she did it. Because ABC News knew that a lot of the American people were not as smart as ABC News. So they wanted us to understand the real reason Hillary deleted 33,000 emails, even though there was a subpoena to turn them over to Congress. I don't remember anything about this. I'm very unfamiliar with the whole thing. I should probably read more about it, but I do know that this guy propagandizes constantly, uses hypocrisy to justify everything that Donald Trump does, absolutely hates Hillary, and talks about buttery mails nonstop. And she ignored it. Why did she ignore it? Because she's Hillary. Okay, I don't like I don't know that that's even true. Eventually they did get their hands on this stuff. And she doesn't have to do anything. Right. She has protection. She has a get out of jail free card. What is he even talking about? If somebody actually breaks the law, like actually breaks the law, then they should go to jail. Period. I don't care who it is. Hillary, Obama, anybody. Donald Trump too. If they break the law, they need to go to jail for it. She can murder people and not go to prison. What? She can murder people and not go to prison? What What brought him to this conclusion? This is insane. Not only did she delete the emails, but she also sought outside help to hide the deletions. Yes. Okay, and that's the next article. This is Denver, Denver Post here. Also, this is within a two or three day period here, these stories coming right. out. So, so it's all during the 16 campaign. Right. So FBI report Platte River network employee used bleach bit to delete old Clinton emails. And not just bleach bit is not to delete old emails. Bleach bit is used to hide that you've deleted old emails. Okay, let me explain. I actually know a lot about this. Before I was a YouTuber, I was a software engineer. I know exactly how all of this works. Okay, this is actually kind of funny because Donald Trump heard that she used bleach bit. It's a program that erases a hard drive basically uh, anybody can get it it's a super easy program to get and use and it's commonly used by all different types of you know government agencies and whatever else right well donald trump hears that hillary clinton used bleach bit and didn't understand what that was so now he's going around saying she was bleaching her hard drives or she's acid washing the hard drives or stuff like that the funniest part about the acid wash claim is that bleach is a base, not an acid. So he's got that wrong in just 
in so many ways I can't even articulate. Anyway, a hard drive is a set of zeros and ones, right? And you have files on this hard drive. Well, the first bit of a file is a marker, basically, to that file. And when you're when you want to pull that file up, if it's an email, if you want to read that email, the email software has a record of all like all of the files on that computer that relate to emails. So it's basically like a list of pointers. Okay, and the pointer points to the location on the hard drive, the first bit of this document so when you delete a file it just erases that pointer it doesn't actually erase the file itself it just forgets where that file is on the hard drive so when you drag a file into the recycle bin and hit clear or when you delete an email off of your computer or whatever it doesn't actually delete it if somebody it just deletes a reference to it if somebody has a piece of software like I used to use Norton Ghost back in the day. I don't think they even make that software anymore. But if you have some piece of software, you can get into a hard drive and find these chunks of data and you don't even need to have the links or the pointers in their original positions. You can just find these big long strings of data and create a new pointer and see what was in it. For that reason, when you're dealing with like national security stuff, you don't just drag something to the recycle bin and hit clear recycle bin. You use a program like Bleachbit to overwrite the entire section of the hard drive with zeros. And the Department of Defense standard on that is overwriting the hard drive with zeros seven times. There's another level above that where you overwrite it 11 times, I believe. And that basically makes it safe to throw out. But just in case, sometimes they physically destroy it also in addition to using a program like Bleachbit. That's just what you do with national security level stuff. You don't put it to chance. If Russia could get their hands on it or China or any other adversarial country they could get their hands on this they could get their tech guys in there to find you know these files that were left on there and you don't know what was left or what they can recover so you overwrite it with zeros seven times with a program like Bleachbit, and you destroy it with hammers that's the national security standard but you know donald trump doesn't understand any of that and honestly neither does rick wiles neither of them really understand any of this stuff so they're going to talk about her acid washing it or bleaching the hard drives or dipping the hard drives in bleach right now. It's just insane, dude. The is, clean just, just to just, destroy just, the trail. Yeah, yeah. Does just what bleach does, mm -hmm. you know, eliminates the dirt. And so although it eliminates the dirt, he has no idea what he's talking about. Like not even a little bit. Uh, the FBI, even though they had this information and knew that this was done and also sought to conceal the deletion was Hillary Clinton ever charged for that? Was, was there a raid uh, on her house? It, it was all standard stuff. She was right to use bleach bit and hammers to destroy the, the information. You don't want that stuff out in the public, period. You don't want it. Anyways, uh, yeah, I don't hold that against Hillary Clinton. She did the correct thing by using a program like bleach bit on her hard drives. Uh, did they wait till she was out of town and uh, wake up Bill and say we're coming in? She had classified so. secret government documents on a private email server in her house. She did, uh, I believe. I mean, I, if I, I believe I'm correct in saying that, yes, she did. She did have that stuff. I don't see why that's a big deal. It would probably be better if she didn't. But you know who else used private email servers? Donald Trump. And Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump and Ivanka, they all use private email servers. I would prefer that they were more careful with classified information. I would prefer that they were more careful with their government correspondence, but they still used, and well, Hillary Clinton still used like end to end encryption and stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know enough about this whole situation to be to talk about it at length. I feel like everybody should be a lot more careful with government documents. Donald Trump taking TS slash SCI documents out of the White House. That is the most egregious, disgusting case of it that I have ever seen in my life, though. 
significantly worse than Hillary. Way, way worse than buttery mails. Servers were in her house. Yes, a private server, a government employee having a private server that just didn't uh, raise any bells with anyone. Of course. Why would it? No, it's not a big deal to have a private server in your house that you use to communicate with people. That's not a surprise at all. Of course it did. And I think you and I, we figured out what she was doing. She was, she was, Peyton. she was selling government documents. She had Absolutely no evidence of that. Matter of fact, that's something that I don't even claim about Donald Trump. I have no reason to believe that, that Donald Trump is selling government secrets. I would have thought that he would have done that long ago, like long before now, if he were to do it at all. But I'm not making any assumptions or guesses about Trump selling secret documents. I don't know. And the fact that he is making this gigantic leap in logic is absolutely absurd. Absolutely absurd. Oh, and I don't know how you do this every day. I appreciate that you do so I can be informed without following these cult members. I find it fascinating. You don't find this absolutely insane? I find it so interesting. I'm like blown away by this. Had a side business at home. That's right. So she had a she had a drop box. And when you dropped a certain amount of money into the Clinton Foundation, you had access to the drop box to get the document. Right. You know, if I were an FBI agent, I could bust her. But, but did anyone get busted? No. So. No, no. Dude, what is he even talking about? Let me just listen to that one more time. Get the document. Hang on. Documents. She had a side business at home. That's right. So. She, had a, she had a drop box. And when you dropped a certain amount of money into the Clinton Foundation, you had access to the drop box to get the document. Right. How does he know any of this? He's saying it so confidently. How does he know any of it? You know, if I were an FBI agent, I could bust her. But, but did anyone get busted? No, so. no, no. Only the people who think that she's a crook. That's who, that's who gets in trouble with the FBI. Now, in the same week, the same three or four day period, another story comes out about uh, the about Hillary Clinton having a whole bunch of Blackberries and five iPads and everything like that, and that she and her staff, when they were done with certain equipment, they took hammers, government equipment, and busted them up. That's what you're supposed to do with sensitive materials like that. This is standard practice for national security level stuff. You overwrite with zeros or ones or whatever, seven to 11 times, and then you destroy it physically. Yes, and the FBI um, cooperated with them. The FBI knew she did it. And the story was so incredible that even the folks at CNN didn't believe it, and they had to fact check it. And so we're going to watch this interchange here of this conversation. And remember, this is... You mean exchange. Back from September of 2016. And uh, watch how the news media just goes right along with it and acts like it's not a big deal at all. It's not a big deal. But the fact that the FBI cannot say with regard to her emails that they were not conclusively, not totally hacked, that's not a good thing. No, it's not a good thing. But you know what is a good thing? The release of this report. The Clinton campaign wanted this report to come out. Why? Because the FBI had an exhaustive year-long investigation. They talked to probably dozens and dozens and dozens of people hours, hours and hours of testimony, and the decision not to recommend uh, prosecution for was absolutely unanimous. Was it careless? Yes. Was it a mistake? Yes. As Hillary Clinton said, I should not have done this, and if I ever had to do it again, I'd make a different decision. But was yes. it criminal? No. It was not criminal. So I guess that's the on. benchmark now to go become ahead, president, is not no, to be a criminal in jail. To be but let's go through the facts. Forces, 17, 17,500 emails that she lied about turning over. The server wipe. Within weeks, of there being a report that she had a private server, it was wiped. She thought that C, which stands for classified, stood for, stood for cookie or something, which stands That's for classified. She thought that drone strikes are not classified. Dude, I have no idea what who these people are or what they're even talking about. And I honestly wouldn't put true news, put it past true news to completely doctor evidence. So take all of this with a grain of salt. She said that the... In fact, I know that True News would most definitely clip things out and take them out of context intentionally 
to make it seem completely different than it is. So just take it with a grain of salt. The reason she used the private servers for convenience is that she only had one uh, device. She used 13 Blackberries. Let me finish. And five iPads. At least she doesn't just stick to the Blackberry iPad. This is somebody who is absolutely disqualified from becoming president. They destroyed Blackberries with hammers in the state. This is what you're supposed to do. Yes, of course they destroyed their stuff with hammers. This is not surprising. The Department of Defense does this all the time. Department. That's not what won the president. Actually, and Evan, way, Evan, Evan, no, Evan, Evan, hold on. Way, you fact check that. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, Evan Perez. Hammers, fact check that for me, please, on the fly. Uh, yes, they did, Brooke. Uh, I as, think so. as, uh, <laughs> they as did. you mentioned, there were uh, 13 devices, mobile devices, and five iPads that uh, the FBI said that you know, in some way, were used with with her private email server, and they did, in some cases, just destroy them with hammers when they were done using them. She said that's a pretty good way of destroying her training. Way of destroying no, it's not. Device. That is absolutely not following the rules and regulations of the State Department. You know it. You're. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That is actually following the rules of the state department you are supposed to take certain measures to destroy things after you're done with them these people are so full of shit completely full of shit the two reasons just went down to one no reasons left listen here's the bottom line here this is somebody who's disqualified from becoming president she said that she didn't remember her training Excuse because me, of her concussion Boris, does she still not remember your, things enough is your this grandstanding is, this your is all listen, these are all facts dude i don't know what he's talking about she doesn't remember her training because of a concussion what did I say one thing wrong? Oh, the good old days of Hillary Clinton. Yes. And the FBI never raided the no. Clinton home. They never questioned. No, but they did start an investigation into her three days before the election or something like that. Uh, it was deeply, deeply corrupt how they treated the whole Hillary thing. There really wasn't that much there to begin with, honestly. But they're going to propagandize and freak out and cry and scream and talk about buttery mails nonstop because Donald Trump got caught in a, an even worse scandal than she did. So naturally, they're going to lose their minds over what's happening with it. Didn't her about any of her crimes. Didn't uh, crack her safe at, at her, her place. No, but she, she cracked a lot of uh, devices and... Uh, Knowing Hillary, she cracked a lot of skulls over her lifetime. So, oh, give me a break. They're claiming that she's a murderer now in secret. They have no reason to believe any of this stuff, but they buy it anyways. This blows my mind. And it's even more sad that these people are on TV, Direct TV, Dish Network, Verizon, all of it. They are on these networks propagandizing and lying like this. Let me ask you a question. If I came in one day and you asked, hey, Doc, where's your phone? I said, oh, Rick, last night when I went home, I took a hammer and I <laughs> smashed it. And I go, hey, wait a minute. That belongs to True News. You don't have <laughs> a right to do right. that. <laughs> that's right. It didn't belong to True News, though. It was her BlackBerry. And aside from that, the State Department specifically requests that people do these types of things with their devices to guarantee that it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. When you're dealing with super sensitive information like this they're acting like hillary had no right to anything classified she had a complete right to access classified information she was the secretary of state it's ridiculous it's not mine to smash with a hammer well, what was on it doc that you wanted to smash see that would be well, the first thing it doesn't matter anymore rick i smashed it with a hammer that's right <laughs> and that's what she did yes you know why because she's hillary and she does what she wants to do God, they believe her to be some, like, an evil James Bond or, like, a Red Skull type of character, like a neo-Nazi in disguise that's trying to kill everybody. This is just insane. Because she knows she has a get-out-of-jail-free card. Somebody very high up, very high up the food chain paid for that get-out-of-jail-free card. The Clintons have committed crimes for decades knowing they will never ever be held accountable show us what you're talking about give us evidence hard evidence not i thinks actual evidence and i'll believe it that's all i need is a little evidence i don't know who has that kind of power oh yes i do there is an entity that has that kind of power that they can give you a blanket guarantee you work for us you'll never be held accountable this is getting into QAnon stuff now. The Clintons work for an entity 
that has the power to keep them not only out of prison, but even out of court. Is there any evidence of this at all? Any. I will take anything. That the FBI won't even go and talk to them. Remember the but the FBI did talk to them. Hillary Clinton sat in front of Congress and testified for like 11 hours over the Benghazi stuff. The, this is like complete delusion. Like they're rewriting history here to make it out as though Hillary has never gotten in trouble for absolutely anything she's done. Completely forgetting all of the times she sat in front of Congress and testified for like hours and hours and hours and hours. The big, the big uh, uh, investigation of Hillary was on July 4th. Yes. And they never swore her under oath. No, they're out sitting on eating the porch. hot dog. What? They never like made Hillary take an oath. What is he talking about? Eating hot dog, and drinking sweet tea, and so. Well, that sounds amazing. While Hillary uh, can get away with uh, cracking crackberries with a hammer, uh, the FBI now. What's a crackberry? Is taking phones away from sitting members of Congress. And this is the story. This is Scott Perry. Uh, says the FBI seized his phone. And Rick, uh, uh, the FBI has confiscated the phone of Republican Rep. Scott Perry of Pennsylvania, an ally of former President Donald Trump, Perry said in a statement to CBS News, this morning while traveling with my family, three FBI agents visited me and seized my cell phone. Just like the KGB. So Perry alleged they made... Okay, every single society in in the history of ever has had the right to seize materials from people under some circumstances. If we want to live in a society, we have to be willing to give up our right to not be searched ever under any circumstances. Sometimes people need to be searched for this thing or that thing. Sometimes people need to be arrested. I agree by living in this society, I agree to go to jail if I break the law. Or I, I understand the police have authority over me and can take me to jail for one reason or another. If I don't think that the reason they're giving is above board, then I fight that in court. That's how a society works. These people are nuts. No attempt to contact my lawyer who would have made arrangements for them to have my phone if that was their wish. Yeah. You know why they don't contact your lawyer and ask nicely? Because there's a risk that you will delete everything on it. There's a risk that you'll claim that you don't have it or you don't want to hand it over for one reason or another. And that's why search warrants exist. That's why they're executed the way that they are, to lower the risk that you're tipped off and try to escape or find some way out of it or whatever, or delete incriminating information. Now, if you recall, at a public hearing in June, the House Committee investigated... You know, Breonna Taylor didn't have the courtesy, was not granted the courtesy of people calling her lawyer ahead of time and scheduling the search on her house. Why should Donald Trump get the courtesy of having them call his lawyers to ask him if it's okay if they show up and search his house for these documents? If black people don't get that privilege, Donald Trump shouldn't get that privilege either. The January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol showed testimony from former White House aide Case Cassie Hutchinson, who said that in a December 2020 phone call, Perry expressed support for encouraging people to march to the Capitol on January 6th. Is that a crime? A congressman encouraging citizens to assemble in front of the congressional building. The Okay, so Rick Wiles doesn't believe that the January 6th events were, like, illegal or bad or whatever else. And that's why he thinks it's absolutely wrong that Rick Perry, Congressman Rick Perry, who was involved in pushing people to show up there at the Capitol, he thinks it's wrong that he'd have his phone taken away for that and, and, and searched and went through and stuff. I'm sorry, man. If he broke the law... We don't know if he broke the law yet, but search warrants allow the FBI to seize materials whether we know unequivocally that he broke the law or not, just so that we can investigate if he broke the law or not. And that's what they're doing. This is completely above board. The Capitol building. The, is that a the crime? The building of the people. Yes. Is that a crime? We the people. Is that a crime? I guess it is now. 
in, in this day and because age. Because the commiecrats have declared it a crime. Right. And so the FBI seized his phone to find out if he made any phone calls encouraging people to go to the Capitol building. Just a protest. Just to express... No, it was not just a protest. These people were expressing an interest in capturing members of Congress and using them as hostages. They were screaming, hang Mike Pence, and they had gallows out front. By no stretch of the imagination was this simply a protest. Their views. I'm, I'm just kind of, kind of confused about this a little bit, Rick. I mean, doesn't the FBI have, I mean, the ability to do a warrant and to access anybody's phone records if they wanted to, if there, were, if there was reasonable cause? Not really. Not necessarily. It's not as simple as accessing phone records and stuff. And I think you can access phone records, but you can't see what was discussed necessarily. It's really difficult to make this work or to get this information. So basically, it makes complete sense that they would want to get his phone. That's what made this curious to me about this particular situation. Mm -hmm. And did they not present a warrant for his phone? He didn't say anything about a warrant. It's he didn't say anything about a warrant, naturally. If they didn't have a warrant, you can bet that this dude would not have turned his phone over. He would have had no legal obligation to, and they would have had no legal right to keep the phone in the first place, so he could just get it back if there was no reason for them to have it. There was certainly a warrant for them to have the phone. Just seizure, okay? The FBI is totally out of control. Now, this is a constitutional violation against unreasonable search and seizure. They have to have a warrant, or he could sue the shit out of them. They most certainly had a warrant. I'm sure of it. Yes. The FBI needs to be disbanded. There needs to be a new system for law enforcement. I am pro-law enforcement, but the FBI... Oh, clearly. Totally. Weird how they suddenly want to completely disband or defund an arm of law enforcement now, isn't it? They feel like they're being mistreated by law enforcement, incorrectly. Law enforcement is treating them exactly how they treat everybody else right now, or at least every other white person. And they are losing their minds over it. They're used to privilege. Donald Trump is used to being treated like a king and never investigated, never mistreated by law enforcement, never searched or anything. Suddenly, when law enforcement is doing its job, he loses his mind. Big surprise. It's out of control. And they, the agency needs to be disbanded. Donald Trump needs to run on a platform to abolish the FBI. You know, the FBI director that signed this paper like that signed his search warrant or whatever was appointed by Donald Trump himself so I don't see the justification here I don't see how they can come to the conclusions they've come to already that needs to become a Republican campaign promise in 2024 Ooh, abolish boy. the FBI Wow abolish the IRS no more collecting taxes, I guess. You know, the FBI is the organization that investigates domestic terrorism. So it makes complete sense that the party of domestic terrorism wants to abolish the, the FBI. That, that checks out completely. I think the FBI's funding should be expanded, honestly. I am against domestic terrorism in all its forms, no matter what. In fact, I think we should be stricter on domestic terrorism, especially stochastic terrorism. I would like to see laws implemented that handle that a lot better than it is right now. If that includes people on the left, the right, the center, the anywhere. I don't care what kind of attacks you think are justified. They're not. They're not. Department of Education. Maybe just abolish yes, them all. Abolish. Yes. Department of Energy. Why yes. do we need a Department of Energy anyway? Dude, are you kidding me? Why do we need a Department of Energy? You've got to be kidding me. So, hey, I got a couple more uh, I want to share with you before we uh, turn the lights out. Um, this next one, oh, this is so pagan, so New World Order. Oh, my God. Yeah, Illuminati is another word for New World Order, by the by. Anytime you hear him talk about the New World Order, it's about the Illuminati. It just reeks with it. It does. They're so...
proud of their satanic loyalty to Lucifer. So first article, this is uh, The Guardian. The raging bull to remain in Birmingham after the Commonwealth Games this is in, in Great Britain. And uh, so uh, they, they have um, the Commonwealth uh, nations of Great Britain. Right. They have their own little scaled down Olympic Games just right. for the nations that are in the Commonwealth. And um, so they had the, they had the uh, event uh, in recent days. And the opening ceremony, which is like the Olympics, was just raw paganism. Luc <laughs> Luciferian paganism. And we're going to show you a, a video of the opening, uh, the opening uh, scene, and you'll see Prince Charles arrive. Yes. All right. And uh, and uh, I assume Prince Charles is part of the Illuminati. You know, all the the, the great uh, luminaries of Great Britain were there. For wow, he's just. <laughs> <laughs> were the games. So watch it and then you'll see what happened in the opening ceremony. Welcome to Birmingham. Oh my God, it was a Muslim. Can you imagine? it if they weren't playing music i'm just gonna skip through i don't know what song this is but i don't want to risk anything raging bull okay now let's stop here and hear what he has to say greatest pleasure to declare the 22nd commonwealth games open okay commonwealth games got it well you would think that the prince whose mother is the queen is the head of the church of england would have been outraged when they brought that bull idol out and people bowed down. To Dude, it's supposed to be an idol now. It's a pagan, like, uh, like a golden calf type of situation. Worship yes. the bull. But the prince wasn't offended. You know why? He's in on it. <laughs> I think he, I, I have a feeling, Doc, he's a closet Luciferian. I Luciferian is the same root word as Illuminati. Uh, it's basically light bringer is what it means. Um, anytime he talks about Luciferians or Illuminators or whatever, he's talking about Satanists slash Illuminati. Uh, also, one world government or cabal, any of those things, it's all Illuminati. Do. Well, I have seen videos of him doing sword dances. And so. Well, that's okay. I do a sword so. dance. <laughs> That's just a Saudi redneck. <laughs> <laughs> You're on fire today, Rich. <laughs> that's, that's no different than, than dancing with your shotgun. <laughs> so, but bowing down to a idol. Yes. A bull idol. They bowed down. Okay. This is the Luciferian government that's rising up. Illuminati government, and it is it is a it is the um, the revival of the pre-flood satanic government. Yes, and it's coming up right in front of us, and we're witnessing it. I, and while we're on that topic, I got one more story because it goes with it. Uh, I found this in Commerçant, which is a big newspaper in. In Russia, common sense, kind of like the New York Times, Washington Post of, right. of Russia. Oh, no. Okay, here's something that I've noticed about the QAnon movement, of which Rick Wiles is a member. You can see Putin's fingerprints all over it. Every con new conspiracy theory that they come up with in the past six months, it's all revolved around Ukraine being evil and part of the cabal and everything. It's like... So transparent, honestly. It is so transparent to see these people come up with these convenient conspiracies about Ukraine being evil and bio labs and all this other stuff. Putin very obviously has his finger on the pulse of QAnon and is seeding the movement with people trying to spread conspiracy theories desperately and succeeding seemingly. So let's see what Rick Wiles has to say 
about Ukraine being evil and all that stuff. And uh, look at this headline, looked into the eyes of monsters. Now, it's a compelling uh, article in Commerce Hunt because uh, Russia is saying that Ukrainian soldiers were turned into monsters. So uh, on Monday, the Federation Council held a regular meeting of the Parliamentary Commission to investigate the activities of American biological laboratories on the... See, exactly what I was saying. They're propagandizing. Uh, obviously not true, but Putin's fingerprints are all over this movement, all over the QAnon movement. ...territory of Ukraine. Now, according to the co-chairs of the commission, a blood test of Ukrainian servicemen showed that they were subjected to secret experiments as a result of which they were turned into the most cruel monsters. The expert considers the statements of Russian parliamentarians about biological attacks by the United States hypertrophied. Uh, now, following the meeting of the Parliamentary Commission on July 18th, its co-chairs, vice speakers of the Federation Council and the State Duma, Konstantin Kosachev and Irina Yar Yarovaya, shared with journalists some new results of the investigation. Now, Mrs. Uh, Yarovera uh, developed the topic, started by Mr. Kosachev, and said that traces of drugs in very high titers for, uh, or markers for hepatitis A were found in the blood of Ukrainian servicemen. Uh, the interests of pharmaceutical companies in the acquisition of expensive and very reactive drugs in terms of the consequences and specifically for the treatment of hepatitis. It is quite possible that it was about testing these drugs on military personnel. The so this isn't the first time that they've made these bizarre claims about testing people for this thing or that thing. Here's another example of Rick Wiles. Hang on. It's um, this is another example of Rick Wiles talking about like the vaccine doing this thing or that thing. Listen to this. This is from late October 2021. It is not a vaccine. It's an operating system. It's an operating system. It is a symptom suppressor, but more than anything else, it is changing your DNA. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have anything against polio vaccines, measles vaccines. You can, you know, those are vaccines. This is not a vaccine. This is changing your DNA. It, the mRNA, it's a messenger RNA vaccine. It's obviously completely made up. Uh, I have no idea where this guy is getting any of these ideas but it's complete nonsense but there's a point to this conspiracy theory okay he believes that the vaccine is changing your dna which will basically exclude you from god's kingdom because you're not human and only kingdom or only humans will be allowed into god's kingdom so he thinks that this is a luciferian plot from satanists to turn you into a Nephilim who won't be allowed to get into God's kingdom. Absolutely insane. It's not a, a, a hey, hey, calling it a vaccine. It's a term they put on it. But it, it takes control of your DNA. Mm -hmm. You will never be the same person that you were before you got vaccinated. They're putting something in you that changes your body. Okay, so that's crazy enough. But if you've seen the other parts of this whole video that I've been doing, you will have seen this clip that I showed earlier. This is a global coup d'etat by the most evil cabal of people on the planet. Uh, Mid-October mid 2021 is when this one came out, by the by. In the history of mankind, and if it is not stopped in the very near future, they will win. That's what's at stake, control of the world. They're planting you're putting eggs in people's bodies. We, if you didn't see yesterday's True News, you need to watch it. It's an egg that hatches into a synthetic parasite and grows inside your body. Obvious, complete nonsense, but doesn't matter to Rick Wiles. He will espouse any opinion he wants on here. Anything that checks out to him, whether it's true or not, doesn't matter. He'll say it anyways, and he will say it as though it's a fact. Pretty emphasized. And she says in this, and we see that the... So back to the video that we were watching earlier, the whole point here is he believes that the cabal is attempting to change your DNA to exclude you from the kingdom of God. And here's 
how I know that Putin's fingerprints are all over these conspiracies now. Because now they they focus around Ukraine. Now the soldiers are like monsters who've had their DNA altered to blah, blah, blah. And it's evil and it's the U.S.'s fault and it's Ukraine's fault and Russia is totally justified and blah, blah, blah. That is the direction they're coming from this and is absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. I feel like the U.S. should be doing something about the fact that Russia is very obviously seeding conspiracy theories in the U.S. right now. I don't know what they could do about it, but something should be done. Cruelty and atrocities with which the military personnel of Ukraine behave, the crimes that they commit against the civilian population, those monstrous crimes that they commit against prisoners of war, confirm that all this is a single system of control and creation of the most cruel killing machines, which was sold under the control of the United States, and those doping that they are still given in order to generally neutralize the last traces of human consciousness and turn them into the most cruel and deadly monsters also confirms this. Okay, great. So I need a little bit of evidence. That's all. I'm just looking for some evidence. Please, I'll, I will take anything. Russia is saying it. You should automatically be suspicious and require evidence for it. In addition, she said, in the test tubes of U.S. military laboratories, you need to look for bird and swine flu, coronavirus, and monkeypox because of their particular interest in the origin of viruses and pathogens of animal origin, then disguising them as natural pathogens and the natural occurrence of an epidemic. This is such a stealth maneuver when, preferring to remain unnoticed, they actually create unforeseen situations in different regions of the world. Doc, what do you mean, what do you think she meant uh, that they created cruel monsters? Well, she it says in that that the purpose of these drugs was to eliminate human consciousness. Yes, so you could kill with no guilt. Right. Killing machines. Dude, they are absolutely insane, and they will believe anything. This is so deeply sad. That's about the end of this, like, Rick Wiles thing. These people are nutty, dude. These people are nutty. If you want to see more stuff with Rick Wiles, let me know in the comments. I'm absolutely fascinated by this stuff.